Trace, uh, you guys had a few days to kind of get back after that overtime thing. Uh, you've obviously come into a week now with uh, games with Maryland and Minnesota teams you've beaten before. Just as you zero in on this now, I mean, obviously you know how important these two are, but uh, uh, how, how is the mindset and how ready to go are you guys? Um, we're hungry. Ohio State, that's a game that we should have won. Um, both of those teams, Ohio State and Wisconsin, uh, they're both games that went down to the wire. Um, we had a lead with two to three minutes left. We just got to finish them out. So they're both top 25 teams and just shows how close we are as a team to success. So um, Maryland, they've been playing really well lately. Um, they're coming in here and we just got to take it to them, honestly. There's ain't no other way to put it. So it's time to get the bad taste out of our mouth because we're really tired of losing, honestly. Zach. Hey, sorry, I'm kind of a, a bit of a left turn, but um, I'm just doing something bigger on race. And I know yeah. you two guys have been close for a while now. You've played together for, what, three years? And I imagine you spend a lot of time together just as, as guys who play similar positions, spend a lot of time working on things together in practice. Just what have you seen from him, I think, this year in particular, maybe after the coaching change, after everything kind of settles out in terms of who's staying, who's going, and, and he really starts to kind of try and, really bet himself into the role he's in now. How have you seen him maybe embrace being a leader more this year, you know, trying to be more of an energy guy behind the scenes, just all the things that you'd expect from a, a fifth-year player? Um, race in general just is a totally different player from this year to last year. Not necessarily just a player on his court, but just how he handles himself and carries himself. Um, last year, he never talked very much. He wasn't very vocal. This year, he's trying to lead guys, just trying to be positive, especially with how things are going right now. And also on the court, putting people in positions to succeed, helping younger guys, especially JG and his role, because he knows next year that's going to be him in that situation. So um, he's been doing really big things for us, and he's going to continue to help us and help our team win. So um, that's I love race. That's my guy. Um, he's one of the hardest workers on our team. And can't say enough good things about him. Mike Schumann. Yeah, Trace, Xavier's been kind of going through ups and downs this year and a little, little bit of a funk right now. I know you consider yourself a leader of this team. What are you doing personally to kind of keep him on, on in the right place to help lead you guys down the stretch right now? Yeah, X is just, um, he's just someone that he just, he's, he's going to be okay. Um, few rough games he doesn't define him he had a few rough games early this season and then he bounced back and was playing the best ball that he's played with us so um we just got to stay on him and stay in his head and talk him good thoughts because um especially right now with all the negative energy surrounding our program we can't have guys fracturing especially inside so um we're all we got and we're going to keep I'm going to keep telling him to do just do things such as shoot the ball make plays because we need that from him Alex Bozich Hey, Trace, thanks for the time. Coach Woodson's talked a lot this season about trying to help you guys learn how to win. Where, where do you – I guess what has his message been consistently throughout the season on that? And, and what do you think is maybe the difference right now between uh, winning and losing in some of these close games? Is it just coming down to late game execution, or can you put your finger on, on one thing that's maybe holding you guys back? Um, I think it's a lot of different characteristics that go into that. I think one of the biggest thing is that um, uh, we got a group of people on our team that have never actually succeeded and actually done anything. So like learning how to win with guys like Parker, who was at Pitt, Xavier, who was at Pitt, um, like actually playing for something, playing for the um, – like playing to get into the tournament. They've never had to do that. They've never had that pressure. So having that pressure for the first time, it's hard. So and Coach Woodson and all of our coaching staff has done that. So we just have to rely on them and they're going to keep putting us in positions. But at the end of the day, players play and coaches coach. So we're going to have to execute on the court and um, hopefully we can get it done next game because we need to start putting um, some wins in yeah, W column. So, Mike Pegram. Hey, Trace, do you think one would kind of break the ice for you guys? Um, you know, you see it with Maryland and Iowa right now. One win kind of leads to three or four. Does that stop you pressing during a game? Or what, what are the team dynamics or something like that? Yeah, um, I mean, I think that's a big thing. I think um, especially how it was during the earlier in the season when we just were getting buried on the road, couldn't find a road win. All of a sudden, we beat Nebraska 
then then we beat Maryland on the road. So just breaking the ice, really, that's what Coach Woodson's been talking about a lot. He said, you just got to get that taste out of your mouth. And um, once we finally get that win, I feel like that will kind of string us to playing better and get that confidence back up. Dustin. Trace, obviously a, a big reason why you guys haven't been able to close out, especially these last two, is just able to get a bucket in, in offensive possessions late. What I imagine you guys have watched those and, and kind of looked at the good, the bad, and the otherwise. What do you think hasn't gone well? What has to go right, I guess, in some of these late when you need a bucket to uh, to try to put a game away or, or a free throw or something? Um, it just comes down to preparation. Um, Coach Woodson draws a play. We got to be 100% dialed and locked in, um, especially like things such as screening, um, getting guys in the right position. I know on one of our plays against Wisconsin, um, we, we drew up a three point play and no one hitting one on screen, including myself. So that was a big thing for us. So like just making sure that we're we're executing because we're not executing and that's leading us to not getting um, the ball where we need to get it. So. Alec, lastly. Yeah, Trace, kind of piggybacking off of that question, do you guys see yourself pressing at all when you go through these long uh, kind of slumps of not scoring, not getting to the foul line, or any kind of execution not really working out as well? And does that affect you guys at all mentally on the defensive end of the floor and try to put a little bit more pressure on, on that side of the ball? Um, are you talking about, like, pressing up on the court? Uh, like, uh, just kind of pressing mentally where you're trying oh. to force the issue. Yeah, well, um, I, like with our team, it's nothing that we're like, like obviously it's it's losing the way that we've lost in the last two is demoralizing. But at the same time, dropping two to three and then coming back and playing a top 25 team in Wisconsin and bringing that energy, it just shows that we're still here and we're fighting. And then doing the same thing, going down 10 at Ohio State and coming back and taking the lead with a minute left. Like it's just showing that we're still here and we're, we're not going to go anywhere. So um, we just got to close out games and we got to believe because I think that's just a confidence thing at this point. Tom Brew. Trace, I know at the beginning of the year when we talked about uh, your reasons for coming back and such, you you know you wanted to add a lot to your game. And we've seen a lot more of your right hand this year and a lot more right hand spin moves and such. And certainly uh, a lot of improvement in some regards to covering a lot of game on defensive end. But the one thing that we haven't seen and we all kind of thought that we would from you is, is more of that little mid-range game from the elbow and stuff like that. And I know Coach Woodson has mentioned a time or two that you make those in practice and such, but we just haven't seen them in the game. Is there, is there any particular reason for that or is it just it's just, you know, what's behind that? Um, really, it's just, it's just what Coach Woodson wants me to do. Um, right now, he wants me to be a basket, back to the basket player for us. And obviously, I feel like I I'm, I'm, can do more. But at the same time, if he thinks that's going to help us win, then I'm going to do it for him because that's what matters. And obviously, I feel like I'm still drawing a lot of doubles and we're getting good shots. We just got to start making them. And I believe in our guys and I believe that we're going to start making them. So. Um, that's Coach Woodson's game plan, and it's playing inside out and pounding the ball inside. So that's what we're going to do. Tyler. Hey, Trace. I hope you're doing well. Um, this, isn't, this isn't as much of a basketball question, but I don't know if you saw the jerseys that you guys um, are wearing tomorrow. Um, I was just wondering about your reactions to it and also what um, Black History Month means to you. Um. I, I've seen the jerseys. I've kind of seen a little picture of it, but I haven't seen it. I've seen like the flowers and stuff. I think that it's really cool. Um, just symbolizes something that just the world, just not even the U.S., but the world just needed, needs to see, honestly. Um, Black History Month to me is very important. And just, um, just the strides that we've made throughout society in the last century has just been huge. Um, but it's really, really cool. And honestly, I can't wait to rock the jerseys. Last question, Kevin. So, uh, you know, I know going through losing streaks is never fun, but I noticed that when you were walking to the locker room with Xavier, you kind of motioned to kind of pick his chin up. He was he seemed really down and dejected. Just kind of a leadership piece of this for you, you know, having been through a few seasons here, what's that like and, and how important is that going to be for you going forward to kind of, uh, you know, uh, take on take on that role uh, it, to, to get things turned? Um, yeah, so basically, um, I've been, I've seen both sides of this scenario. My freshman year, um, we dropped, I think three, and then we played Minnesota and we got a win there. And then we got a win against Penn State. 
and uh, we really turned the ship around and I, I believe that we would have made the tournament so um, if there wasn't COVID but um, then my sophomore year um, we dropped how many however many we dropped but it's just you can't it's demoralizing to lose but you just can't feed off of that you got to you got to be ready for the next game because college basketball comes quick you got a game two to three days and if you're still living in the past then you're never going to get over the hump so you just got to keep going and you got to keep building and x is down on himself right now and um, a lot of guys on our team are so i'm just going to keep trying to pick them up because i've already been through this situation and i'm going to try to do everything in my power to help us win